Welcome to my latest case, The Secret of the Old Clock. To start, choose Junior or Senior Detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, click on Tutorials. The year, 1930. The place, the road to Titusville, where we find Nancy Drew behind the wheel of her blue roadster, pondering this question. Why did Emily Crandall, a girl whom Nancy knows only through their mutual friend Helen Corning, ask Nancy to drive all the way out to the Lilac Inn to see her? Does it have something to do with the fact that Emily's mother died barely a month earlier, leaving Emily to run the restaurant with only her guardian to help her? And more important, why, when she called, did Emily sound so desperate? The spunky teenager turns off the main road, blissfully unaware that Emily isn't all that awaits her at the end of the driveway. No, Nancy Drew is about to get her first taste of the mystery, intrigue, and adventure that are to become her destiny. Well, hello. I'll bet my bloomers you're Nancy Drew. That's right. Are you Emily's guardian? You got it. I'm Jane Willoughby. I'm Emily's guardian, but only for the next three months until she turns 18. Then she's on her own. Mmm, it smells like someone's been baking pies. Pies are the lilac in specialty. We get orders from all over. Oh, that reminds me your father called. You're supposed to call him. You can use the coin phone on the porch. Emily didn't say anything about you coming until just this morning. She didn't? Don't get me wrong, she can invite anybody here she wants. It's just that she's gotten so darn forgetful lately. Maybe she's just, you know, still thinking about her mom. She misses her mom, that's for sure. So do I. Glory and me, we were best friends, you know? The two of us ran this swell little dress shop over in Capital City. But then she got hitched and I didn't. And the next thing I know, she's writing me saying it would sure take a load off her mind if I could take care of her little girl should something ever happen to her. It was nice of you to say yes. I couldn't say no. I mean, what are best friends for? I just wish I knew how to help Emily. You make it sound like she's in some kind of trouble. She's been acting so... Look, go talk to her. She probably just needs to spend some time with a bear cat like you instead of some dumb Dora like me. Go on up. She's in her room. Just make like a Boy Scout and be prepared. Nancy, hi. Welcome to the Lilac Inn. Oh, and before I forget, Thank you for that nice note you sent me when Mom died. It meant a lot to me. When Helen told me I felt so bad for you, I had to do something. You and I may not be best friends or anything, but you're still one of the nicest people I know. Well, thank you. That's why I'm hoping you'll do me a favor, a big favor. You and your dad? What kind of favor? What's wrong? I thought I heard something. Your father has a safe, right? You need to put something in a safe? See this jewelry? I'd like you to take it home with you and put it in your father's safe. It's beautiful. It was my mother's. The few times I saw her wear it, she looked just like a movie star. I was hiding it here in my room, but all things considered, I'd feel a lot better if you would just take it home and have your father lock it up in his safe. What do you mean, all things considered? Strange things have been going on around here. That's all I can say. I know it sounds loony, and Jane probably told you that I've been acting loony, but please do this for me. What was that? Ah! Emily, come downstairs, quick! The kitchen's on fire! Come on, we better get out of here! This is horrible, just horrible. The fire chief says the stove was completely destroyed and there's smoke damage everywhere. The inn will have to shut down for months, maybe even for good.
Does he know what caused the explosion? It looked to him like one of the burners on the stove had been left on. The flame either went out or was never lit, but anyway, something made a spark and boom. He said insurance companies are very reluctant to pay out when things look hinky. And that's when times are good. Where did Emily go? She was right here. Emily was the last person to use the stove. Like I said, she's been real forgetful lately. I think she's pretty upset, but it's not her fault. What with her mom passing away barely a month ago, and me showing up, this total stranger who doesn't know the first thing about kids or running a restaurant, and her trying to do everything all by herself. It's just too much, that's all. Who wouldn't go a little off their nut? <sighs> I better get that. The line to the regular phone got burned up in the fire, so now the only phone we got is the coin phone on the porch. Excuse me. Oh, no! Emily? My mother's jewelry! It's gone! Someone must have stolen it while we were all downstairs. I knew something like this was going to happen. I just knew it. You mean this sort of thing has happened before? Yes. I mean, no. I mean... I'd rather not say, but I will say this. I did not leave the stove on. That fire was not my fault. Oh, what am I going to do? Without that jewelry, I don't have a prayer of paying for a new stove. And without a stove, I'll have to sell the inn. And if I lose the inn... I wish Mom were still here. I wish Josiah Crowley had left us the money like he always said he was going to. That's what I wish. Who's Josiah Crowley? He was this old man that lived next door. He died last year. He spent most of his time here at the inn, and he led my mom and me to believe that he'd left a lot of money for us in his will. He gave us a clock, and afterwards, he'd always point to it and get this little twinkle in his eye and say, Time will tell. But when they finally found his will, he didn't leave us a penny. Was there a problem finding his will? It didn't turn up for months. Then finally, someone found it in a drawer in Josiah's house. Josiah was kind of a screwball. <laughs> One time he showed up at my birthday party dressed as my great aunt Harriet. I didn't know it was really him until two days later. Anyway, he had all these weird hobbies, and he always thought it would be really keen to read minds. Josiah invited Richard Topham to move in so Topham could help him develop his paranormal powers right there in his house. Josiah was a sweet old man, and I do miss him, and he was free to give his money to whomever he wanted. But to get our hopes up like that, and then leave us nothing, it just wasn't like him. Where is Richard Topham now? He still lives in Josiah's house, which is right down the path out back. His house and the inn were built at the same time by two brothers during the Civil War. Was your mother's jewelry insured? Gosh, I forgot about that. I don't know. Jim Archer, I bet he'd know. He's our banker. I guess I should go talk to him. Not one of your favorite people, huh? Oh, no. Mr. Archer's very nice. I mean, for a stuffy old banker. I'm just so bad at business things. And Jane, my guardian, she tries hard, but she's no good at it either. Maybe you could go talk to him. Please? It would be such a big help. Sure. He runs the Main Street Bank. You can't miss it. I'll call him and tell him you're coming. How many people knew you kept your mother's jewelry in here? No one. Well, Jane, my guardian, she knew, but I didn't tell anyone else. I'll be back in a little bit. Don't forget to call your father. Is this your sewing machine? Actually, that belonged to my mom. She and Jane used to be dressmakers. Mom was going to teach me how to use it, but she... she never got the chance.
So, is Emily all right? Someone stole her mother's jewelry. What? Did you happen to see anyone go upstairs during all the commotion that the fire caused? No. You mean someone stole it while everybody was rushing around trying to put out the fire? Hypers! If you can't trust a fireman, who can you trust? Emily said you were the only one who knew she had that jewelry. When Gloria was alive, she could have told people about it, or people may have seen her wearing it. And when she died, they knew the jewelry had to be around here somewhere, right? Does anyone in particular come to mind? Sorry. It's been hard enough getting to know Emily, let alone anyone else in this backwater burg. Well, guess I better go call the sheriff. Is that your car I saw when I drove up the driveway? My old rust bucket's parked out back where nobody will see it. Be nice to buy something decent, but last time I checked, my last name was Willoughby, not Rockefeller. Well, I'll talk to you later. Don't take any wooden nickels. Looks like I need to get the bird from one side to the other. Wonder what this mirror is doing in here. What's cooking? 
Where did that barred bounce game that's in the parlor come from? Do you know? Emily says Josiah Crowley brought it in one day and just left it. Said it was so guests, as in him, would have something to do while they waited for a table. Well, I'll talk to you later. You betcha. Drop a nickel into the slot, please. There we go. Now, how may I be of service? I'd like to talk to Carson Drew. His number is KL57187. Hang on a minute. Carson Drew speaking. Hi, Dad. Well, I see you got to Titusville okay. I got your message. Is something wrong? No, everything's fine. I need to get some documents from a colleague over there. I thought since you were in the area, you could pick them up, save him paying postage. Sure. What's the address? He said he'd just leave them for you at the telegraph office. Just drive into town and look for tubby telegrams. He said you can't miss it. Will do. These papers are extremely important, Nancy. I will pick them up, Dad. Good. Remember, watch your gas gauge and get gas when you're low so you don't run out. And try to avoid potholes. The more you hit, the likely it is you'll wind up with a flat. Yes, Dad. And if you do get a flat, take it off and put on your spare. And then head straight to a gas station and get it fixed. Yes, Dad. All right, lecture over. Have you found out why Miss Crandall asked you to visit? She wanted me to have you lock her mother's jewelry up in your safe. Only someone stole it before I could take it with me. Stole it? Good gosh. That was right after the stove in the kitchen exploded. The stove exploded? Sounds to me like you'd be well advised to cut your visit there short. No, I want to find out what's going on. I have to find out what's going on. You have to? Well, yeah, you know. Emily just lost her mom, and she's worried about losing the inn, and her guardian's all wet when it comes to helping out, and... And the truth is, you are so curious that you feel like you'll absolutely burst if you don't find out why all these weird things have been happening, right? Yes. Don't worry, I know the feeling. You're a chip off the old block, I'm afraid. Well, as long as you're like me in one other way, you should be fine. What way is that, smart? Careful. If somebody says they're going to leave you something in their will and then doesn't, is there anything you can do about it? Not a thing. Whatever's in writing is the only thing that counts. Unless, of course, the will was tampered with or forged, and you can prove it. If not, you're out of luck. Why do you ask? Emily's neighbor, Josiah Crowley, told her and her mom that they were going to inherit part of his estate. But when he died... His will left everything to this ESP expert named Richard Topham. That's too bad, but this Crowley fellow was free to leave whatever he wanted to whomever he wanted, I'm afraid. People do change their minds, you know. I met Emily's guardian, Jane. What does a guardian do, anyway? A guardian is pretty much a surrogate parent. Jane is legally responsible for Emily's physical and financial well-being. Jane doesn't strike me as being the parental type. In fact, I get the impression she's in way over her head. Fortunately for her, it's not forever. Most guardianships end when the ward turns 18. And then both Jane and Emily will be free to do whatever they please. You'd think Emily's mom would have chosen somebody a little more competent to take care of her only child. Things aren't always as they appear. Maybe she's not as bad as you think. Or maybe she's worse. Don't tell me you think Emily's guardian stole the jewelry. Good grief, where did you get such a suspicious mind? I think it was from the person who has always told me that the best way to solve a problem is to look at all the possibilities, Dad. I did say that, didn't I? Goodbye, Dad. Take care. Got it. Looks like someone recently had a key appraised.
find the toy mouse and give it to Yuri, would you please? Otherwise, he'll just keep meowing. He hates strangers. How nice of you to drop by, and thank you for walking instead of parking in the driveway. I'm expecting a pupil. I'd hate for her to have to park on the road. Mr. Topham? Richard Topham at your service. What were you doing just now? I was in the process of trying to make these spoons move by using nothing but my own psychic. Have you ever focused sunlight through a magnifying glass until it was a minute yet searing point of light, Miss Drew? Uh, yeah, I guess. You see, that's what I do with my cerebral emanations, my thoughts. I focus them until they're a beam of pure energy which ultimately disrupts and transforms the molecular force field surrounding the target object. Is that what you teach people in your school? How to beam their thoughts? I take them through exercises designed to help them increase their output of phantasmic energy. If you want to sign up for an introductory session, I believe I have an opening today. What I'd really like to do is talk about Josiah Crowley. Oh. I'm afraid I'm busy, young lady. Far too busy to engage in idle conversation. When would be a good time for me to come back? I'll be blunt, Miss Drew. I've discovered that the more time I spend with the, uh, shall we say, intellectually unendowed, the more my cerebral pulsations seem to diminish, I'm afraid I cannot speak to you further unless and until you prove that you are worthy. That is, that your brainwaves are not unacceptably inferior and thus deleterious to mine. My brainwaves are just fine, Mr. Topham. What I have here is an exercise in logic. If you can discern the correct solution, then I'll know that conversing with you will do me no psychic harm. You may take it with you. Good luck and good day. That looks right. Am I smart or what? I'm getting there. That looks right. Am I smart or what? Am I to assume that you have the correct solution to that logic problem? Right here. Let's have a look. Mm -hmm. mm. Why, you appear to have indeed found the solution. Well, since you've proved yourself to be intellectually above average, which means talking to you should do me no harm, what would you like to talk about? When and how did you meet Josiah Crowley? Last summer, while on my way to the university for a conference, I stopped for a bite at the Lilac Inn. Since it was crowded and I was in a hurry, I agreed to share a table with an elderly gentleman who, like me, was by himself. As soon as I told Mr. Crowley who I was and what I did, well, he insisted that I give him a training session that very afternoon, and was so thrilled with his progress that he demanded I stay and teach him everything I knew. So it was his idea that you set up your school in his house? Oh, I know rumor has it that I somehow tricked him into it, that I insinuated my way into his home, but I assure you that was not the case. Just what does the word paranormal mean, anyway? The paranormal includes telepathy or communicating by sending and receiving thoughts, extrasensory perception or perceiving that which cannot physically be seen or heard, and psychokinesis, using one's psychic energy to reshape or move objects. Were you surprised when you found out that Josiah had left you everything? Delighted, yes. Surprised, not really. Josiah was all alone, you see, surrounded by people like the Crandalls and that banker, Jim Archer, people who were nice to him only because they knew he had money. Did you hear about the explosion and fire at the Lilac Inn this morning? I heard the explosion and fire. Ruined my nine o'clock session. So you were with a customer when it happened? 
pupil. I was with a pupil. I run a school, not a vegetable stand, and yes, I was, until I dismissed her twenty minutes early. All the ruckus made concentration impossible. How well do you get along with Emily and her guardian, Jane? Very well, as far as I'm concerned. But as far as they're concerned, well... The fact that Josiah left everything to me made some people around here, including Emily and now this Jane Willoughby, very bitter. It hurts me, of course, but it's human nature, I suppose. Would it be okay if I looked around? Go right ahead. The place is more like a museum than a house. Josiah was a man of many, many interests. I'll be right here if you have any questions. Was this Josiah's clock? Everything in here was Josiah's. As you'll soon realize, Josiah's mental faculties were starting to go, I'm afraid. He tended to ramble. Very little of what he wrote in there makes sense. What are you when you win, Bard Bounce? What poet is the cat's meow? What will Para, my miniature golf course, get you? What's Gloria's middle name? Becoder is in the ribbit. Two to the right. It looks like Josiah lent a trivet to someone, but I can't make out to whom. The man on stage in this picture, is that Josiah? Yes, that's from a production of A Midsummer Night's Dream that he directed and starred in. It closed after two nights, but he didn't care. He loved that play. What do you 
you do with these? I put them on the windshields of cars parked in the area. Great advertising. Ever put them on cars at the Lilac Inn? All the time. I've gotten quite a few pupils that way. I'm afraid that fire today was as unfortunate for me as it was for Miss Crandall. A miniature golf course. Swell. Interesting. I hit it too hard.
I hit it too hard. I did it! A little toy pony! What's cooking? Have you met Richard Topham? Yeah, I've had the displeasure of meeting that quack. Somehow he knew who I was before he even saw me. He came over while they were putting out the fire today. Asked me who you were, and I was so frazzled at the time I told him. I don't usually give that crackpot the time of day. Josiah Crowley seemed to think he was legit. Like that circus fella said, there's a sucker born every minute. Me? I think ESP is a lot of J-U-N-K. Does the miniature golf course that's out back belong to the inn? No, that was Josiah Crowley's. Way I hear, he built it himself. Have you tried it out? Me? Please, I got better things to do with my time. <laughs> what was Emily's mom's middle name? Do you remember? Of course I do. It was... Oh, piffle. It's right on the tip of my tongue. It was... It was... Ugh. It'll pop into this feeble brain of mine one of these days. Why don't you just go ask Emily? Well, I'll talk to you later. Don't take any wooden nickels. Hi, Nancy. What was your mother's middle name? Lois. Why? Oh, just curious. Is the clock in the parlor the one Josiah gave you? Yes. I don't know why he gave it to us. It's never worked, and nobody can open it to find out why. I'll be back in a little bit. Thanks again, Nancy. saw before is gone. Hello, are you Mr. Waddell? So what if I am? I found this receipt, and I just wondered what you could tell me about it. Let me see that. One key, determine resale value, item 493. Oh, yeah. This was for that key Jim Archer wanted me to appraise. Jim Archer wanted you to appraise a key? It was very ornate. Had jewels all over it. Fake jewels, as it turned out. When I told him it was worthless, the cheapskate refused to pay me and told me to keep it. Do you think I could have it? Sure. Once you pay the appraisal fee... Which is... A dollar and fifty cents. <sighs> Here you go. Good. Here's the key. Enjoy. Hello, I'm looking for Jim Archer. Right through that door. Hello, are you Nancy Drew? <laughs> Sounds like Emily called you. Yes, ma'am, Jim Archer. I'm founder, president, manager, and just about everything else you can name when it comes to this fine enterprise. Did Emily tell you why I'm here? She just said you were coming and that she'd appreciate it if I would talk to you. Terrible thing, losing her mother like that, then being saddled with that restaurant, especially now. My dad says banks aren't doing too well these days. Ever since the stock market crashed, one business after another has closed, including banks. President Hoover keeps saying that a recovery is just around the corner, but you have to wonder. Is your bank doing okay? I'm happy to report that we're doing just fine, thank you. Excuse me. Main Street Bank, Jim Archer speaking. No, I don't. I'm sorry, but... Yes, I know, but... All right, then just bring it by. Sorry for the interruption. How can I help you? 
Do you happen to know whether the jewelry Emily inherited from her mother was insured? Well, I know for a fact that it was not. Why? Because someone snuck into the inn today and stole it. Oh, no. I heard there'd been a fire in the kitchen, but when it rains, it pours, doesn't it? I told Gloria not to let that policy lapse. Why did she let it lapse? She felt that since Josiah Crowley would be leaving her a large sum of money when he died, or so she thought, paying to insure her jewelry just wasn't necessary. How well did you know Josiah Crowley? Well enough for him to name me executor of his will. An executor is the person who makes sure the terms of a will are carried out. Why do you think he wound up leaving Gloria nothing? I have no idea. Truth be told, he'd given me the impression that I would be well taken care of when he passed on, too. But when I finally read his will, it all went to top him. Where did Josiah keep his will? He'd hidden it in a chest of drawers in his house. It took me months to find it. When he named me executor, he said he'd tell me where it was hidden when the time was right, whatever that meant. The will you found in Josiah's house. Is it possible that Josiah didn't really write it? Well, the thought that it could be a forgery did cross my mind. But an expert verified that the will had been typed on Josiah's typewriter and signed in Josiah's hand. But Richard Topham lived in Josiah's house. He had access to his typewriter, and he could have copied his signature. As far as the law is concerned, the matter is closed, Miss Drew. But it's possible that Josiah's real will is still out there. Are you sure he never gave you any clue as to where he'd hidden his will? Whenever I asked him, he said he'd tell me when the time is right. Although, he got a safe deposit box here about three years ago. Has it been opened? Topham has tried to claim its contents, but he can't find the key. Maybe he knows the real will could be in there, only he wants to destroy it. Now, Miss Drew, I wouldn't go jumping to any conclusions. How did Josiah die? He was sitting in the public library reading when, apparently, his heart just decided it was time to stop. What was he reading? His favorite book. The Makeup Secrets of Lon Chaney. How well do you know Jane Willoughby? You know, Emily's guardian? Not well at all. Met her once or twice. Seemed a little flighty. What was Emily's mom like? Had a good head on her shoulders. Friendly, too. Having a big slice of blueberry pie at the lilacan was always a real treat. It'd be nice if Emily could carry on the tradition, but times are just too tough. If she's smart, she'll sell before the bills start piling up. What's your opinion of Richard Topham? Interesting gentleman who's in an interesting line of work. Does he do business here? Yes, he does. Have you ever attended one of his training sessions? No, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I think he's a fraud. He makes a living doing whatever it is he does, so obviously someone thinks he's the real deal. I guess I'll be going. Nice talking to you. Is this your car? Yes, it is. Bought and paid for. Who's Clara? Clara Pickford is this lonely old woman who comes in here every once in a while. Took a shine to me for some reason. Insisted on giving me that picture. Don't you ever use this typewriter? That used to be Josiah Crowley's. It was the only thing he left me in his will. Naturally, it doesn't work. The key's always jammed. October 9, 1929. Dear Mrs. Sheldon, here is the trivet I said you could borrow for your party at Twin Elms. Please take care of it because I will want it back someday. Your friend, Josiah C. I wonder if Josiah ever got his trip it back. Did Josiah Crowley give you this clock? Yes. Unfortunately, it stopped keeping time almost immediately. It would sure be nice to be able to open this thing. Hello again. Was that your car I saw parked near the Lilac Inn this morning? I haven't been there in months. You saw someone else's car. It's a very popular make and color, you know. Whose ever car it was, it wasn't there after the fire. 
Probably just someone sneaking onto that miniature golf course that Josiah built back there. Or bootleggers. I hear they frequent that area, too. The key that you had Mr. Wydell appraise. Could that be the key to the clock that Josiah Crowley gave you? It might have been, I suppose. You know about that? Yes. In fact, I paid the appraisal fee. I have the key right here. How industrious of you. You see, when he told me the key was worthless, I lost all interest in it. So, it would be all right if I kept the key for myself? I have no use for it. In fact, if you want that old clock, you can have it, too. I guess I'll be going. Nice talking to you. I wonder what goes here. Something about this clock reminds me of the poem I saw at the mini golf course.
Hmm. If I could let some light in here, I might be able to reflect it off these mirrors. Something tells me I need to adjust the mirrors so that the light bounces off of them and onto that radiometer. Maybe I should ask Richard Topham if this crystal ever got delivered. Hello, Miss Drew. Hello, Mr. Topham. Now what? Do you by any chance know who Marcel is? Marcel was what Josiah called his favorite hat. His hat? The man named his hat? He loved that hat, so to him, naming it made perfect sense. Do you still have Marcel? No, as a matter of fact, I gave that hat to Gloria Crandall. She said she was fond of the old fellow and wanted something to remember him by, although I suspect the real reason she wanted that hat was to see if he'd stashed any money in it. Josiah ordered something from the Krollmeister Crystal Company just before he passed away. Do you know if it ever arrived? You must be talking about that chunk of quartz that came last winter. I still have it right here. Why? I was wondering if I could buy it from you. For my father. He loves quartz. Perhaps we can work something out. You see, amazing as this is going to sound, I am able to project my thoughts into another person's brain. Is that so? The only problem is, not everyone has the intellectual capacity to receive my thoughts. 
But since you have already demonstrated a high level of intelligence, yes, you may very well be the ideal subject. Me? Really? You are going to help me prove that I am telepathic. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to shuffle a deck which contains five sets of these cards. Then I'm going to turn my back, draw a card, look at it, and start transmitting my thoughts. When you receive my thoughts, you will identify the card I'm looking at. Once you correctly identify five cards in a row, I'll give you that piece of quartz. But what if I can't do it? Just stay focused on the cards and my superior brain power will do the rest. Very well, let's begin. What card am I concentrating on? This one. Incorrect. You must focus. Here's another. This is which card? This one. Wrong. Here's another. Do you know what card I'm looking at? This one? Wonderful. Here's another. Tell me, what card is this? This one? Incorrect. You must focus. Here's another. Which card am I thinking of? I think it's this one. Wrong. Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? You bet. Ready when you are. Very well. Let's begin. Which card am I thinking of? This one. That's not right. Here's another. What card am I thinking about? I think it's this one. That's not right. Here's another. Can you tell me what card this is? I think it's this one. Incorrect. You must focus. Here's another. What card am I looking at? This one. Yes. Here's another. What card am I concentrating on? This one? Wrong. Oh, my gosh. Whenever he picks up a particular card, he always says the same thing. Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? You bet. Ready when you are. Very well. Let's begin. What card am I thinking about? This one? Wrong. Here's another. What card am I looking at? This one. Marvelous. Here's another. Tell me, what card is this? This one. Wrong. Here's another. Which card am I thinking of? I think it's this one. Marvelous. Here's another. Which card am I thinking of? I think it's this one. Very good. Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? You bet. Ready when you are. Very well. Let's begin. Which card am I thinking of? This one. Very good. Here's another. What card am I holding? I think it's this one. Incorrect. You must focus. Here's another. Which card am I thinking of? This one? Marvelous. Here's another. Do you know what card I'm looking at? This one. Wonderful. Here's another. What card am I holding? This one? Wrong. Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? You bet. Ready when you are. Very well. Let's begin. What card am I holding? This one. Wrong. Here's another. This is which card? This one? Incorrect. You must focus. Here's another. What card am I concentrating on? This one. Wonderful. Here's another. Do you know what card I'm looking at? This one. You go, girl. Here's another. What card am I concentrating on? This one? Very good. I wonder, could he be telling me what card he's picking up by which question he asks me? Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? You bet. Ready when you are. Very well. Let's begin. What card am I holding? This one? Yes. Here's another. What card am I thinking about? This one. Marvelous. Here's another. What card am I thinking about? This one. You go, girl. Here's another. This is which card? I think it's this one. Yes. Here's another. What card am I holding? This one. Very good. You did it. Well, actually, I did it. But in any case, thank you for your assistance. Here's the piece of crystal that Josiah ordered. Take it. You've earned it. Well, actually, I earned it, but let's not quibble. But, Mr. Topham, I didn't really... I mean, you didn't really... I mean, I'm afraid that subconsciously you may have... Uh... Yes? Never mind. Do you need anything else? 
What do you think happened to the key to Josiah's safe deposit box? Josiah no doubt lost it. He had a terrible memory, poor fellow. Are you still looking for the key? What's the point? No doubt it's filled with the same thing as this house. Junk. But if it's junk, why haven't I gotten rid of it, you may well ask. Well, I know it's silly to hang on to Josiah's things, but he was a wonderful man, you see, and I just don't have the heart to get rid of them. Too sentimental for my own good, I guess. Do you mind if I look around some more? Be my guest. Nancy, I'm afraid there's been more trouble. Trouble? It's Emily. She... Oh, this is silly. I'm her guardian. I should just make her sell this place. She's only 17, for Pete's sakes. She should be out meeting boys and going to parties, not trying to run a business. Miss Willoughby, what happened? Just go ask her and make her tell you everything. Jane told you, didn't she? Not really. That picture on the wall over there? I saw it move. I was just sitting here and it moved all by itself. I saw it move. I really did. Last week, a book fell off the shelf for no reason. And before that, I heard these weird noises. And almost every day I hear a voice, like a whisper, coming out of nowhere. Jane thinks it's nerves, but I... I don't want to talk about this. Did you see Jim Archer? I'm afraid I don't have very good news. The jewelry wasn't insured? No, but I do have some good news, sort of. Shh! Did you hear that? Hear what? Shh! Nothing. I'm going to have to sell the inn, aren't I? You know, it's possible, just possible, that the will that was found was not the will Josiah wrote. You mean, he may have left us money after all? No, that's wishful thinking. And I refuse to get my hopes up again because they'll probably just get dashed again. Listen, I feel bad enough that you drove all the way out here for nothing. Maybe you should just go home. Would you mind if I stayed for a while? No, but I really don't feel like being sociable right now. There's nothing for you to do. I'd like to try to figure out what happened to that jewelry. <laughs> what are you? Some kind of Sam Spade? Well, just because I've never solved a mystery before doesn't mean I can't. Anyway, there's no harm in trying, right? Who knows? I might turn out to be good at it. Be my guest. Did Josiah ever say anything about hiding his will somewhere? No, but he was always hiding stuff. I know because he was always writing reminders to himself about how to find it. But whenever the subject of his will came up, he'd just say he was happy knowing we were going to be happy when he passed on. Time will tell. That's all he'd say. Do you have any idea where Josiah may have hidden a safe deposit box key? He could have hidden it anywhere. He always said his favorite hiding place was right under people's noses. Would you happen to know where your mother put Josiah's favorite hat? Look in the drawer right below me. That's where all Mom's mementos are. I'll be back in a little bit. Thanks again, Nancy. Maybe this is the key to Josiah's safe deposit box. You don't need to look at everything in there, do you? Sorry. What could have made this picture move? So, what did Emily say? Did she tell you about the pictures and the voices? How long has this been going on? For about two weeks, I guess. You know what? I'll bet it's me. I'll bet it finally hit Emily that I'm just not Gloria and I never will be and that running this place is always going to be all up to her. And it was just more than her poor mind could bear. What did the sheriff say when you called him about the stolen jewels? He said since nobody got robbed at gunpoint or anything, coming out here again just didn't seem necessary. Said it sounded to him like the jewelry had just been misplaced. You see, I... well, it only felt fair to tell him about Emily's 
you know, delicate state of mind. Well, I'll talk to you later. Bye now. Looks like this lever opens the couch. From the looks of those lanterns, I'm not the only one who's been down here recently. I wonder if those tiles are supposed to make a picture. I guess I better not leave the lights on. Jeepers, that sounds like Richard Topham. This door must open right into his there living room. Go, good kitty. Guess I better not leave the lights on. Hello, Mr. Waddell. Now what? I need for you to cut a blank from this piece of quartz. No big deal. Let's see it. 
The blank needs to be just like the one you made before for Josiah Crowley. Like I said, no big deal. You're gonna have to cough up two dollars, though. You can pay me when you pick it up. Good day. Hello again. I think I found the key to Josiah's safe deposit box. Really? I have it right here. It is from this bank. May I see if it opens the box? It takes two keys to open a safe deposit box. The owner's key and my key. And in this case, I'm under no obligation to open it for you. Oh, but I... However, were you to do me a small favor... Sure. I hired a seamstress to make a dress for my wife's birthday next week. Unfortunately, the seamstress and I had a falling out, and now I need to find someone to finish the dress. Maybe I could find somebody. How much are you willing to pay them? Well, the fact of the matter is, the dressmaker quit because I couldn't pay her. I misled you before. Business is not fine. This bank is on the brink of ruin. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Archer. I wanted to get my wife something nice because, well, it might be the last nice thing she gets for a long, long time. Now, Emily once mentioned that Jane used to be a dressmaker. Say no more. Just give me the dress and I'll take care of it. I have it right here. The seamstress said that all the pieces have been cut out and basted together. All that's needed is a sewing machine. When it's finished, bring it back and I'll let you try that key in Josiah's safe deposit box. I guess I'll be going. Give my best to Emily. Mrs. Sheldon? Yes? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm a friend of Emily Crandall's. Get on with it, dear. I was wondering, would it be possible for me to see the trivet you borrowed from Josiah Crowley? You may not only see it, you may have it. Once I find it, that is. Unfortunately, I've an errand to run, so I can't look for it right now. Maybe I could run the errand for you. I have a car. So I see. A rather expensive car at that. Very well, Miss Drew. Go fetch my bridge cards from Miss Drakowski, and upon your return, I shall present you with that trivet. Who's Miss Drakowski? The local telephone operator. You can find her at her house, or Titusville Telco, as she insists on calling it. The switchboard is in her parlor. As you can imagine, she never entertains. I, on the other hand, am expecting company within the hour, so do hurry. Yeah. Are you Miss Joukowsky? Yeah, and you are? Nancy Drew. I'm a friend of Emily Crandall's. You know, at the Lilac Inn. Oh, yeah! I put you through to your father, didn't I? You pick up those papers for him yet? Actually, I... Wait a minute. How did you know about that? See this headset I'm wearing? I plug it in and... Oh, what do you know? I hear things. Look, I'm kind of pressed for time. Going to a party and it takes me a while to get dolled up. What do you need? Mrs. Sheldon asked me to pick up her bridge cards from you. Tell you what, I'll get you those cards if you drive that fancy car of yours over to the orphanage and pick up some raffle tickets from Mrs. O'Shea. I should be able to unload a ton of them tonight. I'd be happy to. Good, I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Excuse me, are you Mrs. O'Shea? Yes. My name is Nancy Drew and... Stephen, put that down this instant. We do not run with sticks in our hands. 
Or in our mouths. I'm sorry. You were saying? Miss Joukowsky asked me to pick up some raffle tickets from you. Oh, yes, the raffle tickets. The fact of the matter is I... Elsie, no hitting. I can't even think about those raffle tickets right now. I promised the children they'd each get a toy for going a full week without breaking anything. And I'm short five toys. Do not eat that, Clarence. Would you like me to get five toys for you? Oh, goodness, if you could do that, I'd be forever grateful. They can be any kind of toy at all. The children aren't the least bit picky. Of course it tastes bad, Clarence. It's a pine cone. I better go rinse out his mouth before. Oh, would you look at that? He's actually chewing it. You're not a squirrel, Clarence. Spit that out this instant. Maybe I could buy some toys for the orphans in here. Two toys down, three to go. That makes three toys. Four toys, I just need one more. Five toys, that's all I need. Do you have five toys for me? I certainly do. Oh, that's wonderful. You're such a saint, you hear me? A saint. I'd better get these inside before the children see them. Thank you so much. Uh, Mrs. O'Shea, the raffle tickets? Oh, the raffle tickets? I don't have them, dear. You'll have to pick them up from Phelps Print Shop. Then just take them straight to Mr. Kowski. We don't pull hair, Ralphie. Especially when we have jelly on our hands. <sighs> Phelps Print Shop, wonderful. Sorry, young lady, I'm about to close. I'm just here to pick up the raffle tickets you printed for Mrs. O'Shea. Aw, oh, darn it. I did tell her I'd have those done today, didn't I? Well, I'm sorry, but they're just gonna have to wait until tomorrow. Oh, but I need to have them today. And I need to go fishing. Fishing? My brother-in-law thinks he's hot stuff because he caught an 18-inch largemouth bass this morning. So I bet him I could catch a 19-incher by the end of the day. And if I do, I get his stamp collection. And if I don't, he gets mine. And since stamp collecting is about the only hobby I can afford these days, I am going fishing. I know. You stay here and print those raffle tickets, and I'll go fishing for you. Not everybody can catch a 19-inch largemouth bass, you know. It takes skill and muscle and brains. Bass are pretty smart. I can do it, Mr. Phelps. You better be right, because you're not getting those raffle tickets until I get my 19-incher. You can use my gear. I left everything out at the fishing hole. Great. I'll see you later. First thing I need to do is bait my hook. Yuck. Now I toss this in the water, and when the bobber goes under the water, I need to pull the line up fast.
Looks like 19 inches to me. Ew, that fish I caught really smells. Let's see what you got in there. How about that? You did it. Here, let me take it from you. <laughs> Please do. I think it's starting to get a little ripe. Just rest yourself a minute while I get those raffle tickets. There you go. Ten dozen tickets to the annual Orphan's Benefit. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go make a telephone call. To your brother-in-law? Yeah, the one who used to collect stamps. <laughs> Bye. Hi, you got those raffle tickets for me? I sure do. Great. And here are Mrs. Sheldon's bridge cards. One of the gals spilled Moxie all over them, but I cleaned them up real good, so let's not tell Mrs. Sheldon, okay? Okay. Thanks for your help, Miss Joukowsky. Thanks for your help. Bye now. Do you have my bridge cards? Right here. Good. And here is Josiah's trivet. I didn't realize when I asked to borrow it that it was such an eyesore. But once a sumptuous dish of my buff stroganoff was placed atop it, I assure you, no one noticed. Now do run along. My guests will be arriving any minute, and that dress of yours, it's, uh, well. I like this dress. It's very flouncy. Something I can do for you? Well, my name's Nancy Drew, and my father Say said Say no that... more. You're here to pick up some papers. They're in that envelope. Thank you. You're welcome. Say, is that your roadster out there? Yes, it is. Did I park somewhere I shouldn't have? No, no. It's just that my regular driver never showed up today, so I've got no way to deliver all these telegrams. How would you like to earn some extra cash? You mean you want me to deliver them for you? You've got a car, you're trustworthy, or at least your father thinks you are, so what do you say? I'll pay you 25 cents each time you complete a delivery. And you might even get some tips. Okay, sure. Great, you're hired. Here, deliver this to Seymour out at Blenheim Nursery. Come back when you're done and I'll pay you and give you another telegram to deliver. Great, see you in a little while. I've only got half a tank of gas left. I should gas up before I forget. I've got a telegram for Seymour. Just leave it on the desk there. I'd, uh, tip you, but as you can see, my hands are filthy. What are you doing? I'm trying to doll up some of my plants before this guy named Mr. Martin comes in. He's a big cheese at some oil company, and I'm hoping he... Ow! Did that plant just bite you? It did kind of feel that way. I think I'll be going now. Bye! Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Take this to Counselor Alice out at Camp Avondale. Keep up the good work. Welcome to Zippy's, where Zipless service is Zippily Zap and Zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Just 25 cents worth, please.
That'll be 25 cents. Here you go. Thank you, miss. Anything else? No, thank you. Drive zippily. Hi, I've got a telegram for a counselor here named Alice. That's me. Hang on. Oh, go dry up, Jason. <laughs> what a jokester. Anyway, thanks. I'm afraid I don't have any money to tip you. That's okay. Have a swell day. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Deliver this to Mr. Jones at Vash's Dairy. Keep up the good work. I've only got half a tank of gas left. I should gas up before I forget. Hello, I need to deliver this telegram to Mr. Jones. That's me, thanks. You can tell me I'm all wet, but I don't have any money to tip you with. Wait a minute, here, how about a nice fresh glass of milk? Uh, no, thank you, bye. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one goes to Miss Ross at Sunnybrook Farm. Keep up the good work. Hi, I have a telegram from Miss Ross. My name's Rebecca, and I'm only ten, but I'll deliver it to her for you, I promise. I won't let you down or double-cross you or anything like that. Well, okay. Thank you, Rebecca. No sweat. <laughs> I mean, you're welcome. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Deliver this to Dr. Bob out at the observatory. Keep up the good work. I'm supposed to deliver this telegram to Dr. Bob. That would be me. Thank you. Wow, that's a big telescope. Come back after dark and I'll let you take a look. You can consider it your tip. I may just do that. Bye-bye. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Deliver this to Miss Temple at Lowood Academy. Keep up the good work. Hello, I've got a telegram for Miss Temple. I am she. We teachers don't get paid much, you know. I understand. Uh, did this by any chance used to be the Brewster Academy? Why, yes, it did. Thought so. Bye. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. 
And here's your next telegram. This one goes to Dr. Ackerman out at the Deer Mountain Resort. Keep up the good work. Hello, I'm delivering a telegram to Dr. Ackerman. I shall deliver it to the good doctor forthwith. He rarely tips, and I never do. That's okay. Bye. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one's for Old Man Johnson out at his farm. Keep up the good work. Are you Mr. Johnson? Maybe. Who are you? Well, my name's Nancy Drew, and if you are Mr. Johnson, I've got a telegram for you. Well, thank you. Hey, you want a tip? <laughs> sure. Buy low, sell high. Thanks. I'll remember that. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Go to the railroad station and deliver this to Willie Joe. Keep up the good work. Welcome to Zippy's, where zipless service is zippily zapped and zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Just 50 cents worth, please. That'll be 50 cents. Here you go. Drive zippily. Hello, Mr. Waddell. Are you done making that blank? Have you got my fee? Right here. Good. Here's the blank I cut for you. Enjoy. What's cooking? Since you used to be a dressmaker, do you think you could help me sew something? Me? Sew? <laughs> no, I can't. Sewing takes practice, and I haven't sewed a stitch in years. Whatever it is, believe me, I'd wreck it. Then how about giving me some pointers? Uh-uh, no can do. Sorry. Well, I'll talk to you later. You betcha. Hi, Nancy. I'll be back in a little bit. Thanks again, Nancy. Would it be all right if I used your sewing machine? Go right ahead, but remember, you're on your own. There's no needle. It's probably in the box with the rest of Mom's sewing stuff. Ask Jane if she knows where it is. What's cooking? Would you happen to know where the needle for the sewing machine in Emily's room is? I moved all of Gloria's sewing things out of there and put them in a little box. Look, I'm supposed to get the pies we baked before all the hullabaloo this morning ready for the delivery man. They gotta be put in the shipping container just so or he casts a kitten. This is how he wants them organized. Now why don't you go out on the porch and get those pies ready to go while I look for that sewing box? Sounds good.
done. Those are the two brothers that built the inn and Josiah's house. I'll bet this was taken in that passageway I found. There's something written on the back. one of the walls in Emily's room. I'll bet that's how someone makes that picture move. I should ask Jane about the photo I found that allowed me to find that staircase that goes behind Emily's room. Guess I better not leave the lights on. Thanks for doing the pies. The more I do it, the worse I seem to get at it. Here's that box. I'm sure that sewing machine needle is in there somewhere. I see it. Remember, when it comes to using it, you're on your own, kiddo. I think I know why Emily has been seeing and hearing strange things. Well, I'm all ears. Tell me. I found a secret passageway that goes from the inn to Josiah Crowley's old house. And off of it, I found a staircase that leads to a space behind a wall in Emily's room. 
That's the staircase that's in this old picture. You mean, the noises that Emily's been hearing, the things she's been seeing, it's because someone's been sneaking around behind the wall in her room? It may even be that someone is trying to scare her on purpose. On purpose? Who would want to do something like that? I was able to open the staircase because I saw the picture I just showed you. And I found that picture on the shelf in your podium. You mean it was right there under my nose? Hold the phone! You think I'm the one who's been sneaking around? Well, I did find the picture right there. But I've never seen it before in my life. Besides, anyone who's ever been behind this desk could have seen that picture. It's hardly fair to go pointing a finger at me. You're right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. Well, you're just trying to help Emily, so I guess I shouldn't get mad. She went into town to run some errands. At least that's what I told her to do. Heaven knows she could use some fresh air. Well, I'll talk to you later. You betcha. So with that... Miss Drew, not bad at all. Oops, can't play this record until I take the other one off. I'll never forget the night it all began. That dark, stormy, fateful night when I decided the time had come to rid the world of the creature. But it would take money to do that. And to get money, I needed to confront my arch enemy, Nick, who had recently become able to transform himself fittingly into a giant warthog. When his forest hideaway came into view, I dismounted and approached the door on foot so I could take him by surprise. My fear that he would hear me proved groundless, for a terrible storm began to rage, washing away the sound of my footsteps. I peered through the rain-streaked window beside his front door and could see him sitting in front of the fire. He had returned to human form, but the malicious smile on his face suggested that he was recalling his recent poor sign exploits. Seeing that the door was unlocked, I hurled it open and marched across the room toward him. Step away from that bottle of warthog potion, I commanded, and give me the 20 gold coins you stole from my poor servant. I'm not going to give you a thing, save perhaps a taste of my sword. And with that, he drew his sword. In an instant, I had drawn mine, and so commenced the fiercest sword fight the world had ever known. The storm raging outside paled in comparison to our battle. To my surprise, Nick's experiences as a lower life form seemed to have improved his skill as a swordsman. I fainted, I parried, and yet 
victory eluded me. And soon I began to feel my strength ebbing from me. I was tiring rapidly, summoning every ounce of what little energy remained in my body. I lunged at him one last desperate time. Ouch! Why, you've wounded me. I had managed to wound him on his right arm, just above the elbow. Curse you! His words, punctuated as they were by an untimely clap of thunder, sent a shiver down my spine. Save your breath, I intoned, and give me those gold coins. Here, take your precious coins. He tossed the bag of coins onto a chair, but as I reached for them, he reached for his bottle of potion, and in a matter of seconds, my night had gone from bad to horrible. How's the dress coming? All done. This is beautiful. Thank you. Now let's see if that key you found opens up Josiah's safe deposit box. That was Josiah's key, but that is not Josiah's will. It looks like some kind of journal. Would it be okay if I kept this? If it was money or jewelry or something like that, I'd turn it over to Topham. But a journal? Finders keepers, as far as I'm concerned. I'll be at my desk if you need me. It's locked, naturally. It's locked, naturally. who Josiah played in A Midsummer Night's Dream. Pyramus, 7.057 megahertz. Fisbee, 7.050 megahertz. It looks like some kind of record of the people Josiah talked to on his ham radio. Anything else I can do for you? I guess I'll be going. Come back anytime. I've only got half a tank of gas left. I should gas up before I forget. Like Josiah was a ham radio operator. Looks like I can't use the radio unless and until I replace the crystal.
Is anyone out there? Hello? Can anyone hear me? This is Flute, but you sure don't sound like Puck, so explain yourself. Uh, my name's Nancy Drew. So where's Puck? Well, I'm pretty sure Puck's real name was Josiah Crowley, and I hate to say it, but he passed away earlier this year. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Heck, I never got to give him his sentence. His sentence? Well, see, a while back, Puck dictated a sentence to me and told me that if and when he recited a certain passage from Shakespeare, I was to respond with that sentence. Weird fellow, that Puck. Could you tell me the sentence? Oh, no, Puck made me promise. I can only say the sentence after I hear the passage from Shakespeare. Is the passage from one of his plays? Darned if I know. What if I figured out the passage? Would you tell me the sentence then? Uh, I suppose I could do that, yes. Did you know Puck very well? I felt like I did. Met him over the radio a couple of years ago. <laughs> what a character. What'd you say his real name was? Josiah Crowley. Strange. I never heard of him. Why is that strange? Uh, he led me to believe he was this big cheese out in Hollywood, you know, some famous producer, director or something. Said he owned his own studio. He didn't own a studio, and he certainly didn't live in Hollywood. I'll be darned. So he was just lying to me. Well, that's all right. I may have told him a fib or three over the years myself. Like the time I told him I was a scratch golfer. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. In any case, you tell me the passage, I'll tell you the sentence. Until then, over and out. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? I'm Thisbe, but only Puck calls me that. Who's this? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm afraid I have some bad news about Puck. <gasps> oh, dear. They closed the play he was starring in, didn't they? That's why I haven't heard from him. He's too far down in the dumps. Oh, I was afraid it was something like that. Actually, you haven't heard from him because he passed away several months ago. Oh, my. That's worse, isn't it? And after all that rigmarole he went through, making sure I knew my line and understood my cue? So he gave you a line to say and told you to repeat it only after you heard your cue, which was a passage from Shakespeare. Why, that's exactly what he did. He did the same thing with you, didn't he? How he enjoyed spreading his love of acting. He called himself the Johnny Appleseed of theater. Yes, well, could you tell me the line he gave you to say? I'd be delighted to. Uh, Thisbe, are you there? I'm waiting for my cue. But I don't know what that is. Puck was adamant that I not say my line unless and until I hear my cue. Sorry. So Puck told you he was an actor? He told me that acting was his life and that he'd gotten rich and famous doing it. No matter who he was to the rest of the world, that's what he was to me, and that's how I want to remember him. When I think I know what your cue from Shakespeare is, I'll contact you again, okay? Suit yourself. Over and out. Pyramus, can you hear me? Hello? This is Pyramus. Who are you? My name's Nancy Drew. Does somebody named Puck usually call you on this frequency? Somebody named Puck used to. Apparently he found something better to do. Haven't talked to him in months. Well, that's because he passed away not too long ago. Oh. Well, that's a good excuse, I guess. How'd you know he called me Pyramus? I'm a friend of a friend of his. I found your name and radio frequency in his journal. So why are you talking to me? I was just wondering, did Josiah, I mean Puck, ever ask you to tell him something in response to a certain passage from Shakespeare? Yeah, whenever he rattled off this stupid Shakespeare quote, I was supposed to rattle off this stupid saying he had me write down. How did you know about that? Because he had other people do that too. Just out of curiosity, what was the stupid saying you were supposed to rattle off? Can't tell you. Gotta hear the Shakespeare first. Puck made me promise. Did Puck tell you much about himself? He told me he was just this lonely old rich guy who lived by himself and had a bunch of weird hobbies. <laughs> In a pig's eye. You didn't believe him? Rich guys don't own ham radio sets. 
They own radio stations. In their spare time, they drive fast cars and sail around the world and hobnob with other rich guys. They don't shoot the breeze with working stiffs like me. But... Look, if it made the guy happy to tell me he was rich, fine. No skin off my nose. But he didn't fool me. No siree. Not for a second. Anyways, the missus is calling, which means I gotta skedaddle. Over and out. Hello, Miss Drew. Hi, Mr. Topham. Now what? Could I see that copy of A Midsummer Night's Dream you have there? Why? Well, you said it was Josiah's favorite play. I'd just like to take a look at it. It's a very old copy. I'd rather it not be handled unnecessarily, lest it fall completely apart. I'm sorry, Miss Drew, but request denied. It was nice talking to you. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> a little psychic humor. I better not leave the lights on. I don't hear anybody. Now would be a good time for me to sneak inside and have a quick look at that Shakespeare book. Yori, be quiet. You're disturbing us. Josiah must have circled these quotes, but why? Something tells me I better write down all the stuff that's circled here in my journal. Front door, you'll hear me. Either one, Mrs. Deckman. Just concentrate. Mr. Topham? Yes, Mrs. Deckman. Am I trying to push it or pull it? Push it. You're trying to. Why do I get the feeling someone's following me? Guess I'd better not leave the lights on. Are you there? Flute here. That you, Nancy Drew? Yes, it's me. And I think I know the Shakespeare passage that Puck wanted you to listen for. Let's hear it. Shall we there fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be. That's it. 
Here, let me check my logbook for the response. Uh, now I'm supposed to say, leave by road when the owner is in, because then there will be thieves about. Leave by road when the owner is in, because then there will be thieves about? Those were Puck's exact words. Well, hope I've been of some help. Over and out. Hello? Can anyone hear me? Speak to me. Hello? This is Thisbe. Are you the young lady I talked to before? Yes, I'm pretty sure I know the cue now. I'm listening. If we shadows have offended, think but this and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. <clears throat> the authorities are alert for bad water, so do not go this way. The authorities are alert for bad water, so do not go this way. That's what I was to say, although my delivery was much better when Puck was coaching me. And now, as Puck was fond of saying, I bid you adieu. Over and out. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? This is Pyramus. Is this whoever it was before? Yes, Nancy Drew. And I think I know the Shakespeare quote Puck used to rattle off when he wanted you to say that stupid saying. Think so? Well, let's hear it. Thou speakest aright. I am that merry wanderer of the night. How'd you know? Long story. What did he tell you to say in response? Wait a minute. I had to write it down. Here. You're gonna love this. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. I told you it was stupid. I really appreciate your help. Just out of curiosity, what kind of car did Puck drive, do you know? I don't think he had a car. And he tried to tell me he was rich. Over and out. I've seen these symbols before. They were in that newspaper story about hobos. Flute is a character in A Midsummer Night's Dream.
A golf ball. No doubt meant to be used on that golf course of Josiah's. Another safe deposit box key? Come on, please. Just sit down. It's all right. It's not all right. Stop lying. Something's wrong with me. You've got to go talk to Emily. She's in a bad way. What do you mean? What's happened? Please, go talk to her. She won't listen to me. I'm no help at all. Just go back to River Heights, Nancy. Why? What's the matter? I took a nap after I got back from running errands, and when I woke up, this was in my hand. It's one of the necklaces that I thought had been stolen. I have no idea how it got there. I must do things and not remember. All this responsibility on top of losing Mom, I can't cope with it. I'm having a, what Jane call it, a nervous breakdown. No, you're not. I don't want to talk anymore. Go home. You're just making things worse. Did you talk to her? Do you see what I mean? No wonder I never saw or heard anything. It was all in her mind. I'm not so sure, Miss Willoughby. What's more, I think I found something that'll solve all her problems. I'll talk to you later. Hello again. I found another safe deposit box key that belonged to Josiah. Impossible. Josiah only had one box, and you've already opened it. Can you tell me whose key this is? It is one of ours. Where did you get it? I won it playing golf at Josiah's with a special ball. I had to ace one of the holes. Why does that sound familiar? I know why. That's what Clara always called me, her ace in the hole. That's who this key belongs to, Clara Pickford. <laughs> So, Clara Pickford was really Josiah Crowley in disguise. Apparently, he loved playing tricks like that on people and hiding things right under their noses. I wonder what this is. Gloria Dowd, now Crandall, and Jane Willoughby, circa 1912. Jane Willoughby? That doesn't look the least bit like Jane Willoughby. No, it certainly doesn't. Better get back to the Lilac Inn and have a talk with her right now. Move out of the way, would you please? I'm kind of in a hurry. You're not going anywhere until you tell me who you really are. What are you talking about? I just saw a picture of Jane Willoughby. The real Jane Willoughby. It's been swell knowing you, sister. Can't let Jane out of my sight.
that she's heading for the state line. I know. I'll take a shortcut and head her off. Why couldn't you just mind your own business? Dear Ned, I know you'll be home from school in a couple of days, but I couldn't wait to tell you. I just solved a mystery. I figured out that Emily Crandall's guardian was really an imposter named Marion, who intercepted the letter Emily wrote to Jane Willoughby after her mom died. She pretended to be Jane not only so she could steal Emily's valuables, but so she could convince Emily that she was incapable of running Lilac Inn and that she should sell it and split the money with her. On top of all that, I found Josiah Crowley's real will. In it, he left Emily so much money that she'll be able to hire all the people she needs to keep the inn going. He left Jim Archer a ton of money too, which means he won't have to close his bank. And from now on, he'll be able to buy his wife a new dress anytime he wants. As for Richard Topham, Josiah left him nothing. Although Topham still refuses to admit that he forged the first will, and insists that he's going to contest the will I found. Dad says it's highly doubtful he'll succeed, and that he'd be better off sticking to spoon tricks. Anyway, when you get home, I'll give you all the details over a nice big piece of slightly damaged cherry pie. Wait till you hear that part of the story. As always, Nancy. Great news, I think. See, Frank and Joe Hardy have invited me to help them solve a mystery. Only this mystery takes place on a train. But not just any train. A train that was found abandoned years ago in the middle of nowhere. All of its passengers had simply vanished. Some people say the train is jinxed. Others say it's haunted. I mean, it'll be fun to finally get to work alongside the Hardy boys. But I just hope the trip we're going on doesn't turn out to be, you know one way.